Welcome to this video where I showcase some of the features of my game engine that I've been working on for a couple of years at this point. I hope you enjoy. So I just wanted to show how easy it is to get started with the engine. So you just uh, make sure to clone the project. And then there is a bunch of sub-modules, so you also have to include those with the recurse sub-modules. And then it takes a while to clone this. So it takes about two minutes or so to clone the engine from GitHub. We can then go into a game template folder that is uh, an, an empty project of a game that doesn't contain anything, but it's just a boilerplate to, to get started essentially. To build this, we would make um, a build directory change to that build directory and then we can decide to build the editor on or off so now we have set up the project with cmake uh, and it takes about one minute or so and now it's time to actually build uh, the engine with the editor and this can take about five to ten minutes depending on on your pc So when we have built the editor and the game, we can uh, find it here. This is how it looks like when you have started the uh, editor. Um, now this is a completely empty project, it doesn't contain anything, but this is just to show how, um, how the editor looks like when you start it for the first time. The way that the engine is architectured is that you have objects that you can attach a bunch of components to. So for example, we can have a camera, or we can have a mesh, or we can have a Lua script, or a bunch of other things. Here I'm just demonstrating a little example of adding some cubes that will have a material, as well as of course the mesh itself for the cube, and also I will add the simple script that will add the motion to the cubes going up and down following a sine wave pattern. Of course I'm also adding a little bit of lightning to the scene to make it look a little bit nicer. Here I am adding the sine wave movement script that I will also show later how it's implemented in C++. When we press the start game button we can see how the cube starts moving up and down because we have added a sine wave component to this cube. The way that you make your own components is fairly straightforward. You just have to make sure that you inherit from the JLE component and that you register your own component so that it will be visible in the editor. Then you can add it to your objects. For example, the update function in this sine wave component just makes the object transform follow a sine wave. Components also has other functions such as the start function, the on destroy function, as well as of course the update function. It also has a serialization function that is used to save variables on the components in the object. There is also a parallel update function that can be used to update components concurrently on several threads for increased performance. There is also some editor functions that the component can have, such as the editor update, which will only run in the editor, the editor gizmos render, which is used to render certain 3D meshes such as for example a lamp that will have an actual gizmo for the lamp or the sun or something like that and you can also have specific uh, inspector rendering for this specific component. You can also write your components in Lua and so for example this is the sine wave component but it's written in Lua instead. So for example we have our cube here that it has the sine wave uh, component attached to it, but this is a C++ version of the sine wave. Let's try to see what happens if we have the Lua version of the same component.
and we remove the C++ version of the component. There we go. Now we have one sine wave component with the Lua version of the cube and then another one with the C++ version of the, of the component. So this is how the Lua version of the sine wave looks like and we can also compare it to the C++ version and we can see that it's actually very similar. In the update function we do the exact same thing. We set the position of the object and there's also a way to set your properties on the object. As you can see, you can of course change the frequency, the magnitude and so on and so forth. Uh, those are the variables that are on the Lua component and as well on the C++ component that are exposed to the editor so that you can change them while the game is actually running. I think there is something missing for our scene. We can see here on the left how the game view looks and it looks weird. We can actually add a camera. And we can have a camera preview of how it looks like here. I think we should have perspective on. Let's add this. Okay, we're ready to go. It's here. If we want to, we can also open up the the Lua script inside of the editor. And we can make changes directly here and they will be prob probably updated into the game immediately as we make the change. So let's make a change, for example, let's change the direction of the sine wave. As you can see, we now changed the, the direction of the, which the sine wave moves. Instead, now it moves in the Z direction. Currently, there is no way of differentiating between the C++ version of this cube and the Lua version of this cube. Um, they are both blue, but we can see that they both have the cube material here. So let's have a look at how materials works in the engine. So we will add a new material here. It will be Lua cube. So now that we have created our material here, we can assign the material. We can open it up here and uh, we can change how we want it to look like in the form of color, textures, normal, metallic, roughness and so on. Let's have a look at a slightly more complicated scene. So this is a scene with some transparent objects, transparent cubes as we can see here. It also has some foliage. and some PBR statues standing here. They have roughness, metallic and albedo maps, as well as opacity maps, and the normals of course. So this is a typical testing scene for computer graphics, which is called the sponsor scene. Um, I just wanted to show it because the engine can load quite complex FBX scenes and split them up into smaller objects, like this one for example, because an FBX usually contains one or more meshes. In, in fact, this one contains a couple of hundred, I think.
it also shows quite nicely how the lightning works. The engine supports both directional lights like the sun and as well as point lights like for example a lamp. The engine also has support for animations of skeletal characters, for example humanoids, and uh, it can also support animals and so on and so forth. Uh, right now what we see here is a character running animation uh, that actually has root motion in the animation. This means that we can enable root motion and we can see how the, the animation drives the movement of the object. The engine also supports blending for animations. So right now we can see how I'm blending an idle animation into a running animation. And we can see that they are both playing at the same time here. But as I change the blend factor, the idle animation will go into a running animation. It will blend into the running animation. This is a little demo where I'm setting up a physics scene. So I will uh, just create some cubes that will uh, collide with each other. So I'm setting the ground here to be a static physics object that will not move. It will just be there as the ground. And then I'm setting the this cube in the middle here as a dynamic object so that it will collide with the static object and as well as other dynamic objects. When running the game with physics, in physics debug mode, you can see the wireframes for the bounding boxes as well as the collision shapes for all the physics objects. The engine is still a work in progress, but it is available on GitHub if you're interested to check it out. There will be a link in the description of this video. Thank you so much for watching this showcase of my game engine that I've been working on for a couple of years. I hope that you found it interesting and I will see you in the next one.